and welcome back. Happy New Year. It's Marissa aka Celeste Orchid. Today we are starting off the new year with some simple fixes because you know why? The new year ain't got time for all your new clothes. That's a joke. This is the beginning of the new year and you know for a fact you want to buy new clothes but your old ones have a little bit of problems. Don't worry, you're too quick. Did I say two? That's a lie. It's three quick fixes quick fixes on how to salvage your clothes that you still love and bring them to the future, AKA this year. Let's get started. For the first item up that we are changing and modifying for 2018 is the sweater you've seen me wear a lot on my channel. It is my sweater, rib cage, Peter Pan sweater, obviously. So here I am putting it on, making sure that it fits in. What's this? My sleeve has come undone? Yes, the calamity. Oh my god. So instead of throwing it away, this is a very easy fix. We are going to sew it up nice and tight. So let's get out a needle and thread. Needle, thread. And we're going to tie a knot on the fabric so that it's already secured, stopping the rest of the seam breaking out. We're going to line up the two pieces and we are going to go in and out of the fabric. Me, I like to bunch it all up on my needle and try to make the smallest, evenest stitches possible using a controlled environment, aka a controlled thread, and thus making me go faster, not really faster, but like just making me able to use the needle more efficiently. And once I'm at the end, oh, I just had the needle come off. And now I'm at the end. So let me put this needle back on. Needle's back on. So now I'm going to create a knot by wrapping the thread around the needle several times and pull it through. That was not expected. Okay, so now I'm just going to have to like sew that little piece of thread back through. Which obviously when you pull through your needle when making a knot, don't have leftover threads. It's going to make it come undone. And now I'm just going to work the remaining thread back through the already sewn piece to make it even stronger. Obviously you want this to be strong. So you're going to go back and re-sew it again and tie a few knots along the way. If you have leftover thread, feel free to sew it back in it. Obviously I didn't do that, but look. It is secure, it is nice, and now you can just cut off the excess, or if you want, you can do the extra mile and super secure it, and so one part of the string onto the fabric, and then pull off your needle again, and make a knot, and knot with the two strings from before, and this way it'll keep it super secure, there's multiple knots, it should not come out, and this way your favorite fabric not favorite fabric, but your favorite piece is fixed. Isn't that great? Hooray! And make sure to cut off any extra threads. If you want, you could just weave that back in, but that was a lot of effort for me, so I just cut them off. Ta-da! And now my sweater is fixed. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, nice and tight. Now, the next piece that I'm going to be doing a lot of this video on is this dress. I created this dress last year in hopes of having a photo shoot done for Halloween, but in the process of moving to Denmark, it did not work out. So as you can see, this dress is very loose on me. It does not stay up. It does not stay on my body, it has no straps, and it just doesn't fit me. So what we are going to do, we are going to be adding a corset backing to the back because look at how much space there is, and we're going to be adding straps to the top and that will complete this dress. And that's what it looks like. So we're getting out a scrap piece of scrap piece of ribbon, this is actual ribbon, and we are going to be using this and making the corset loops out of it. So I'm going to be cutting out two inches per loop. I'm cutting eight little loops, so there's four on each side, and I'm burning the edges on a candle. Because I'm burning it on the edge of the candle, the ribbon will not fray. Fraying is not fun. You don't want these to come on. Oh, well, the candle came undone. Hold on a second. I gotta go light this thing. God damn, stupid, stupid. So here we are again with the lit candle. Like I was saying, 
if you prevent fraying now, it'll be so much nicer on your dress or any piece that you're working on. This will make sure that your corset loops will not come undone when you're pulling on it and it's really smart to do for any project that involves ribbon or paracord or anything of that sort. So, after we do this to all eight of those pieces on both sides, aka 16 times, yes I can do math, amazing right? Now we're going to find out the pieces where we're going to put them. Obviously I cut eight because I knew that there was only going to be about four spots that I can. So I marked them lightly with a silver sharpie. No, I did not have a marking chalk because this is white fabric. So you know what, it's going to get covered by the loops anyways. So I wasn't too concerned. So moving on mate, this is the part where we take a needle and thread and, oh my god, no. Why? Why? Okay, so now we take our untangled needle and thread, make a knot at the end, and we're going to create, that's right, you guessed it, we're going to create a needle and thread combo here, and this will help us create a loopy. So yes, we're making the corset loopy. And the corset loopy will be really easy to make now because we don't have to worry about how to keep it secure from fraying. So sew the loop onto the dress, it's not going to fray anymore, and now just keep adding, um, so keep adding what you need to add, which is, which is the loops. So keep stitching it through. And now, now that you're stitching it through, it should be okay. Oh, it's not okay. Or is it? So it should be attached now. Now, after you've sewn it inside and out and hidden the stitches, go ahead and bring that needle through the back and sew it a few times through the back and secure it this way. Because if you're pulling with your corset pieces, it's going to make it really, really like, not strong, but it's going to give a lot of pull and tension. So make sure to secure it in the back a lot more. This is what it looks like with the four pieces there, sewn correctly over the mar marking parts that you did with the Sharpie that in my case. But this is what it looks like. I am actually using these bat buttons that I found at Joann's and I'm going to enhance this a little bit. So buttons can really change an outfit or add a little bit of flair. Don't be afraid to buy buttons. Yeah, they can get expensive depending on what you get, but I'm going to be adding the silver bats at the edge of the bow just to give it a little pop and make it look a little bit more embellished. So don't be afraid to change buttons on a shirt or anything else like that. So in order to make a button stay, you want to sew through the fabric and then through the button. And repeat this multiple times. These are one eye buttons, so there's only one loopy. So you want to just go through it multiple times. Obviously, these are one of the easiest buttons to use, but it takes forever. So by the power of editing, we are faster in this process. But the good part is I'm teaching you how to do this correctly. After you have done this multiple times, wrap your string around the button and I'm doing it double by making knots around it so it will keep it in place and it won't come undone. And once you're done with that, go back through the back, tie a knot, do it a few times if you want, and cut off the excess. And that is how you do a button for a nice embellishment. You can see it here. They look so much nicer now and it gives that little flare on that ribbon. And here's the corset backing, ta-da! Look, it makes it look so much nicer and we just did that so it fits. Now it's time to add the straps. It's not really falling down anymore, but I think straps will make it look a lot better. So here's the same trim that I used for this dress. Luckily I have some, actually a lot, I have a lot. I bought like 50 yards of it. Anyways, so go ahead and start eyeballing, pin it, not really pin it, but hold it in place on the front part and go ahead and figure out where you wanna put it. Obviously, I'm having the idea suddenly to do crisscrossing. So we're going to crisscross this bad boy and put it in the back. And now I have one measurement. I fold it over, keep it there, and now I have two measurements. Now by the power of scissors and editing, I have two pieces. So now I have two even pieces of my strap. 
Obviously the strap does not need to be burned, so we're just going ahead and start sewing it on. So when we're sewing it on, make sure any embroidery parts are on the outside, aka the right side facing outward, so it looks pretty and it doesn't scratch you, and then you do start sewing it on. So there's two pieces to this trim that I have. There's ribbon in, like woven through with lace. I did secure that down first, but it's really hard to tell on the camera, so it's like just me rambling. Anyways, so you want to do long stitches in the back and then really tiny stitches in the front to kind of hide it so it doesn't go through. Obviously, if you're having black on black, it's not a problem, but any other kind of fabrics, do be wise on your choices and what you do. And by the power of editing, we can kind of fast forward at this point and show you what it looks like when it's completely done. Ta-da! This is my completed dress. My zipper still works, obviously. And here is the corset, the corset part. And looks like I'm having trouble finding the corset piece. I must have messed it up when I was putting it on. But anyways, the corset piece, as we saw in the previous shots, like two shots ago, it does fit. It does work. Now, if I could just... There, there's something. Okay, we'll just grab that and pull it. So anyways, we pull it and it cinches it. It looks so much better. It fits so much nicer. And that is it for my tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. You see the straps, they look very nice and uniform. If, and make sure you subscribe because I love you guys. And thanks for watching. If you use these tutorials or tips, let me know.